Yo, what's up YouTube? Crash Wilcox. Um, bringing you guys kind of a little bit of a different video here. I'm hoping to sort of jumpstart kind of a new series as you guys can see in the title of this, um, PC Building 101. I'm gonna try to put together a series of videos just kind of making simple some of the terms and acronyms and stuff that you see thrown around with different parts of your PC build um, in hopes that when you kind of understand what you know parts and things are and acronyms that they're called by frequently you'll be able to you know just pick up that information a little bit faster make it easier to digest as you start diving deeper into you know understanding how to build a pc and stuff like that you know i know when i was building computers uh a lot of times it gets you know, a little bit difficult when you start hearing a lot of acronyms and stuff thrown around and you're not really sure what they are. You got to spend your time, you know, digging in different areas to find out, all right, well, what does that mean? You know, what are they talking about here? So I just want to kind of make some of that simple. You know, I, I liken it to sort of like being in the military, you know, your Air Force or your Army, and you go to meet with the other branch. You know, they might be talking about some of the same things, but they, you know, say it in different ways ways they use different terms and acronyms you know <laughs> you go and talk to the army and they speak really slowly and use a lot of pictures i'm just kidding i'm just kidding i love you army guys hoorah and all that you guys are great uh, but it gets confusing um, so if you don't know what those acronyms are it kind of slows you down in your comprehension of it so we're going to walk through today um, starting number one with the motherboard uh, because i think that's kind of the main area where you get into a lot of these acronyms and things that can be confusing. Um, and then from there, we'll just move on throughout the rest of the PC build. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, please leave them down in the description below. Please like and like this video, subscribe to this channel. I won't be blowing you up with a million YouTube videos or anything, but it does help me out a lot. Um, but without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so jumping in here, first thing we're gonna take a look at is the form factors that motherboards come in. Now there are a lot of different form factors that you can get into um, for PC building, but we're gonna kind of focus on the more mainstream uh, motherboard form factors that you might come across in sort of like your first PC build. So that's gonna be your ATX, your micro ATX, and your mini ITX motherboards. I know I have uh, mini ATX listed up here. That's not a very common motherboard type. It's just, uh, well, I built this graphic, which is probably why it's terrible, but for Motherboard types seem to fill out the page better than three, so there you go, you have mini ATX. Um, now, there are, like I said, many different types of motherboard form factors. They can be a lot bigger or smaller than the ones you see up here, but again, they're not common. So you can think of the ATX motherboard as sort of the standard format or maybe the more baseline format that motherboards come in. And then looking at these, you can see the big difference from there is um, size, that's gonna be one of the big differences. So obviously a micro ATX motherboard is gonna be smaller than an ATX. Um, but in addition to the size, the features that you get on a motherboard are gonna be different depending on what format they come in. So obviously, you know, on a mini ITX board that's small, you may get less RAM slots, less PCIe slots, less M.2 slots and so forth. Obviously, they have a smaller working area, so they can only fit so many, you know, different features on those boards. So, um, but one thing to consider um, when looking at these boards, uh, in a sense, motherboards are, I guess, upwards compatible, or if you want to look at it, backwards compatible. So if you have a big, like, mid, mid tower or full tower PC case, the smaller micro ATX motherboard can fit into that big case in most instances. Whereas if you have a smaller micro ATX case, the larger ATX motherboard may not fit into that smaller case. That makes sense, right? The bigger motherboard can't fit in the smaller case, but the smaller motherboard can fit into the bigger case. Um, and that's generally um, true. There are some instances where that may not be the case. Um, and then looking at that mini ITX, don't let the ITX as opposed to ATX fool you. In most instances, they are um, compatible um, with all you know, PC case types. Uh, I, from my understanding, the ITX is just a holdover from the older variants that that board was sort of 
build on top of. Um, if you guys have any, you know, enlightening information on the ITX as opposed to ATX, please let me know in the comments. But in most instances, it's still compatible. Um, so obviously, looking at the screen here, you can see the motherboard that we, oh, and I do have notes for today's video. I don't normally do notes, but uh, giving it a whirl. So let me know in the comments if this sucks or not, and I won't do it anymore. I'll just wing it and ruin it like I always do. But anyways, like you can see here, the motherboard that we're using for today's example is the Gigabyte B450 Aorus M. Um, not for any reason in particular, other than this is the motherboard I have laying around. So we're gonna use that today. Um, and then flipping around, you guys can see the back side of the motherboard because everybody likes seeing the back side. Anyways, when it comes to building a computer and picking a motherboard, the most important thing to consider about what motherboard you're gonna get is the socket type. Um, so you might hear it called CPU socket type or just socket type, speaking about the same thing. So for our purposes, again, today, we're just gonna look at the more mainstream um, versions that you might get into. Again, just like the motherboards, there's a lot of variations of socket types that you can come across. Um, but the main two that we're gonna look at is the AM4 and the LGA1151. So AM4 is a socket type that is used with AMD's Ryzen series CPUs. And then LGA1151 is used for Intel's sixth uh, through ninth generation CPUs. Um, and they are not interchangeable. So that's important to note when you're you know, on Newegg or Amazon, whatever it happens to be and you're buying PC parts, make sure you pay close attention to what that socket type is um, in addition to other things that we'll get into later, but that socket type is important. You cannot put an Intel CPU into an AMD motherboard. It won't fit. Um, so as you can see here on the screen, looking at this socket type, you can see it has that little lever arm down there. The way that you insert and secure a Intel as opposed to AMD CPU is going to be different. Um, if you want to see what it looks like, what an Intel um, CPU socket looks like um, go back look at my bitfinex portal build um, on the channel and you can see what that looks like and how you secure that cpu um, or just jump on youtube you can probably search it and find a thousand different videos but screw you if you're not looking at my video um, but yeah just make sure that you are paying close attention to that because again they're not compatible um, so if the socket type is the most important, the next most important um, part of that is the chipset. So it's often said that the CPU is the brains of the computer, and that's pretty accurate. Um, but if that's the brains of the computer, the chipset is the brains of the motherboard. Or another way to look at it is the CPU is the brains of the computer, and the motherboard and chipset are the you know spine and central nervous system of the computer. So the chipset is what takes all that information that the CPU is pumping out and sends it to the right places to get those parts to act as the uh, CPU wants them to act. So um, like we talked about earlier with you know a lot of different uh, socket types and stuff, there's gonna be a lot of different um, chipsets as well. But again, we're gonna focus just on the, the main few um, that you're probably gonna see um, most when you're putting together your computer. So, um, and just like with the socket types, AMD and Intel, they have their own different chipsets and they're not compatible. So on the Intel side of the house, the more mainstream ones you're gonna see today are probably the Z370 and Z390 series of chipsets. And then on the Intel side of the house, obviously you have the B450, but also you might see you know, X, uh, X470 or X570 chipsets. Um, those are gonna be sort of your main ones that you're looking at today and then the last thing to note about um, chipsets and when it comes to pc building is just sort of building comparable chipsets to cpus so for instance if you're using maybe a first gen ryzen like a ryzen 5 you know 1600 or something like that um, that would be comparable with a b or x 300 series motherboard um, you wouldn't want to pair a Ryzen 5 1600 with an X570 motherboard. It's, just, it's too much motherboard. You're kind of wasting your money there. Um, but likewise, if you had maybe a Ryzen 9 3900X, um, 
put, pairing that with a 300 series motherboard would be sort of underwhelming. You're not doing that Ryzen 9 justice on that board. So in that sense, an X570 motherboard would be the comparable um, to that Ryzen 9 CPU. So just trying to find that balance here to get the best you know, performance um, and value out of that PC build. Um, but again, do what you want. You want to throw that $50 CPU on a $400 motherboard, by all means, go ahead. Uh, but then moving on from the chipset, we'll look at the BIOS really quickly. Uh, that stands for your basic input output system. Um, you may also hear this referred to in some instances as the UEFI. While they're not entirely the same thing, BIOS is sort of an older version of what the UEFI, UEFI is. And I think more companies are trending towards the UEFI and sort of phasing out the BIOS um, system. UEFI stands for the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. And all those are B, uh, BIOS or UEFI is um, software that interfaces your PC hardware to your operating system. And if you want to get more information on your exact BIOS, um, just you know, look up the manufacturer of the motherboard that you're using. You know, Gigabyte's BIOS is going to be different from MSI, which is different from ASRocks. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to that and looking up your you know, specific uh, motherboard manufacturer to dig into what the BIOS um, has to off, uh, offer there. Um, and again, we may get into that in a later video. I'm not sure I'm going to do a deep dive into BIOS. There's plenty of those videos out there. Um, but moving on from there, we're going to take a look next at the RAM slots. So we'll do another video on RAM. Uh, I know we'll do that for sure. But just touching on that, RAM is your random access memory. Um, and they will fit into your RAM slots, or you may also hear them called DIM slots. Um, and DIM stands for dual inline memory modules uh, or module slots. So that's where your RAM goes. Um, every motherboard um, supports a certain amount of gigs of RAM and also a certain speed of RAM. So this B450 motherboard, for instance, um, this supports up to 64 gigabytes of RAM and it supports up to 3600 megahertz um, of RAM speed. So that's something that you want to pay attention to when it comes to building the motherboard. You know, you don't want to go and buy 128 gigs of RAM for a motherboard that, you know, supports 64. You know, you're not, you're kind of wasting your money there. So uh, pay attention to that. Uh, but then moving down from the RAM slots, we're going to, like I said, move down to the M.2 slots. So M.2, that is just a format and it kind of serves a variety of purposes. Um, the main, probably two purposes that you'll see, um, the main purpose far and away is going to be M.2 is used for SSD hard drives. Um, so that's just a, a different, um, newer format of hard drive and they'll fit into that M.2 slot here. Um, you might also see in some instances a Wi-Fi adapter. They have M.2 Wi-Fi ad uh, adapters. So a lot of your Wi-Fi enabled motherboards will come with um, the M.2, uh, one of those slots filled with a Wi-Fi adapter. Um, and then on this picture here, you can see the M.2 is covered with a heat sink um, or a heat spreader. Um, those are used to basically, like I said, spread that heat from the M.2 SSDs. They do get pretty hot, so you wanna you know, cool them off with the heat sink. Um, some lower end boards, may not have a heat sink and then depending you know higher board or higher end boards are going to have more m.2 slots lower end boards in some instances won't have any m.2s um, as you can see here we have one um, on this b450 um, and then looking in this same area you'll notice these other uh, slots around that m.2 and these are your pcie slots or your uh, peripheral component interconnect express slots. So like M.2s, um, PCIe slots can be used for a few different um, purposes. PCIe slots can be used to connect graphics cards, SSD hard drives, even Wi-Fi cards. So a lot of times in looking at this board, you'll notice that your PCIe uh, slots, they'll be labeled with an X and then a number after that. Um, and that refers typically to how many lanes um, that PCIe slot has. So PCIe uh, X16 has 16 lanes. So 
that's lanes for information, travel bits information. So more lanes, faster speeds. Um, so typically uh, you're gonna wanna utilize that top slot for your graphics card because that's gonna be your fastest PCIe uh, slot for you. So another uh, terms, I guess, that I think can be closely associated with PCIe slots is the terms SLI and Crossfire. Um, there's the same thing, SLI and Crossfire. Um, SLI stands for Scalable Link Interface. And the only difference is SLI is an NVIDIA sort of branded term and Crossfire is an AMD branded term. And they both refer to the process of using multiple graphics cards um, simultaneously to sort of, you know, push up that frame rate and get your, you know, graphics cards um, working a little bit faster, getting you better performance. So it's the same process, just marketed differently, different names. So now we can flip this board around to the side and take a look at the I.O. panel and the I.O. shield here. Um, that's the input or output panel. Um, the only thing that I really want to make note of here, I mean, this is just has all of your ports, um, HDMI ports, you know, whatever happens to be on your board, USB ports, audio ports. Um, but I really just want to focus on the USB um, portion of this. So I don't know of any modern, you know, newer motherboards that have anything older than a USB 2.0. And USB 2.0 ports are typically black. Um, USB 3.0 ports are typically blue. And then from what I've typically seen, USB 3.1 um, Gen 2 ports are gonna be red. Um, if you guys have seen anything different, let me know in the comments. Um, but basically the way you can look at this, USB 2.0 is considered high speed. Um, USB 3.0 is kind of considered super speed. And then, you know, those Gen 2 um, USB 3.1s are kind of super duper speed. Um, that's not the technical term. Uh, they're just fast. So if you have, you know, USB 3.1s or USB 3.0 ports available, you typically want to use those. Just like the, graph or the, the PCIe slots, you want to use those faster slots when available. Same thing with the USB ports. Um, they're just gonna be faster. So faster is better, right? Um, now right above this, you can see the IO shield. Um, some of the newer boards, they're kind of beginning to have these um, IO shields pre-installed on the board, which is a nice touch. Um, and then a lot of motherboards nowadays that, I'll, that I've seen, you'll see them labeled. So if you're not really sure what these different ports are on the back of your motherboard, um, the IO shield should have them labeled, you know, as far as your HDMI and USB 2.0s and different things like that, they should all be labeled on there. Again, some lower end boards, you may not see that. Some higher end boards, you may see that and may also be um, pre-installed uh, on the, the motherboard, which is pretty nice. Um, and then last thing, flipping this board all the way around, I just wanted to touch on the back plate. Um, so these come in a lot of different sizes and shapes. You know, some really high-end boards, you'll see the entire motherboard is covered with a back plate. Um, Mid-range boards like this one, um, that back plate is removable. And usually, if you buy a CPU cooler, um, a lot of times they'll come with their own back plates. So the back plate in most instances, uh, especially the ones like this, are used to connect the CPU cooler to the motherboard. Um, so if your CPU cooler comes with a back plate, you, know, you can just slide this one off um, and interchange those. So um, that's it kind of for this motherboard walkthrough. Like I said, I didn't want to make this, you know, I'm not breaking down how a motherboard is made and works and all that. These are just getting you in touch with some of the different parts, the acronyms, what they mean. Um, so that as you're doing more research on your own, you kind of have a better understanding what, what they're talking about. So please like this video if you liked it, or even if you didn't like it, just like it, because it helps me out. Subscribe, uh, I promise I don't make enough videos to blow up your, your YouTube with. Um, but stay tuned, because we're gonna be coming with part two of our $600 PC build. Um, here in just the next few days, it's just hard to find time to put that thing together. 
Um, but we're gonna be doing that step by step, um, build guide on that with some benchmarks. And then also moving on to um, probably from here, maybe jumping into CPUs, just kind of walking through again, just like we did with this, some of the different acronyms and that sort of thing um, in regards to CPUs. And then we'll go on from there to all the different parts and components of a computer. So thank you guys for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if there's anything that I can do better or if you have any questions that I didn't answer here, let me know and I'll do my best to answer those. But I thank you guys for watching this. Have a Merry Christmas.